Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Halo 5 Legendary Lone Wolf walkthrough. This is Mission 7, Part 2, a reunion. And it's going to be a reunion with the Warden, so I hope you're looking forward to that one. A character who I find really interesting, but it's soured a little bit by the fact that every time you fight him, it's generally pretty miserable. The first encounter was arguably the most fun for me because I found a really good spot to do it. The second one here, I've got a decent spot, but it's... There's so many dudes. This game is is obsessed with throwing lots of dudes at you when there's a big dude who's really dangerous there. It seems to be the, the thing that it likes to do. And somebody left a very concise point on one of the older videos in this walkthrough saying that Halo never really did bosses very well. And it hasn't. And like I'm trying to think of the ones that I remember. The only one I remember is that dude who looks like E.T. who's on that floating chair from Halo 2 and you jump on him and start punching him in the face and it's absolutely hilarious because if you don't know that you can do that that fight's really dangerous there's like a ton of dudes in that room that make it really scary and really easy to die on legendary but if you know what you're doing you just jump on his chair and beat his tits off it's it's kind of rough the poor guy whoever he was he's like a prophet or an ice cream driver I don't know but this is the warden I bring the turret down to put some damage on him immediately I honestly am not sure if you have to damage and kill the Warden in this sequence because there are so many enemies and this is such a long sequence of fighting that it makes me hope that there is a way to skip it, but I didn't try. Instead I just, I committed to the attrition, I committed to the, the trench warfare and I just got on with it. So a few things to know, it's a multi-layered fight that has every, pretty much every different Promethean enemy type in it. You're going to face crawlers, you're going to face soldiers, you're going to face knights, you're going to face the warden, you're going to face all of it. And this arena has a, a fair few spots of decent weaponry, but for the most you're going to be picking up shitty suppressor guns and, and what have you that really are unsatisfying to use and don't do the business that you need them to do on Legendary. However, as I said, there is sequential checkpoints that are going to make this progression easier. And if you want to command your team, I would recommend you to command them to all shoot at the Warden, if you could, just to try and weather him down while you're dealing with all these dudes. And uh, as you can see, most of my team is dead. So it's one of those things where the team mechanic is probably quite interesting on lower difficulties, but on Legendary, I can't see it making a difference. I truly can't. The AI is just not smart enough. And uh, I wouldn't want the AI to do all the work, but at the same time, it'd be great if they did while they were alive, if they did something. But there's our first checkpoint, as I stick a couple of those weird grenades on, on one of the knights. And then there's a guy over there with what looks like a light rifle, and this guy's trying to rush. But he's not rushing me, so I take his armor, and then I pop his face. Which, God, it's so satisfying when he kills those enemies. But it should literally be one to two shots to break the armor on the head, and one shot to kill. It shouldn't be as many as it is, and I, I, I'll never agree with it, I just won't. And it's one of the reasons I never played Halo multiplayer for very long because people take too long to die, even when you hit them in the face with the better guns. Like, it's it's always something that's frustrated me. And I think it's 100% taste, because I have a lot of friends that were always really big into Halo multiplayer, and that was just was never me. But I think that this multiplayer on this game is going to be really different, because the dodge changes everything in my eyes. Like, the ability to get a short distance away from immediate damage is insanely powerful. Just like that orb there, that would have one-shot me if I'd have not backed up and used the cover. But it's all about information and awareness, guys. Once you've seen that orb as many times as I had by this point, you know exactly how it works, you know exactly how to survive it. Sometimes it'll still catch you. And if you're looking for a miserable time, and you want to see what mine was killing the final boss of the game, there is a lovely fail video on my channel at the moment that is called... Uh, He's brought in focus turrets. <laughs> because it's the sound file you're going to hear a lot and uh, my advice for you on that sequence if you get stuck is to turn off the voices because she will not say it and you can still hear the warden and everything and you can still hear where he's going because sound on that fight is actually really important you need to be able to hear the lasers you need to be able to hear where he is because your radar is a piece of shit that doesn't work and I hate it which I'm going to talk about right 
On this game, you have a radar that shows you where people are. On the multiplayer, doesn't it show you where they are at all times? So it's like the best version of a fucking radar? Why don't we have that in the campaign? I just... What is the point in sporadically giving me information on that map instead of giving me everything? Like, it's not going to break the game. It's not going to make it easier. It's just going to be a heads-up awareness tool. That's literally what radars do. And on the final boss, when you need to know where he is and you can't see him and you can't go out of cover to see him, all you have is your map, and you're waiting for it to bloody pulse so you can see where he is. And half the time, he snuck up on you and shoved a suppository laser up your ass. So there's no what you can do. Straight up DSP. Nothing I could do. Horrible controls, obviously. <laughs> but I just, I find it really frustrating that this is the future where we have all this awesome tech. We're playing as this fucking super soldier who's a legendary hero, and yet he's got an intermittently shitty radar. Like, come on, dude. Even fucking bats have figured this shit out. Thousands of years before you even existed in your weird, bizarre, Halo-obsessed future. But bats are amazing, and Master Chief isn't. And that is fact. Because it's my opinion. <laughs> oh, people. But a couple of people dead. I'm up here. This position where I am right now is the safest place you can be. Because nothing can get close enough to do any real damage unless that very rare instance where they flank and for the most you shouldn't have any trouble here. The Warden can't seem to figure out how to get up here either, so we're gonna use this spot to clip him later on. But just use your advantage of distance and your superior intellect to take out the, the AI and their habits and keep on pushing forward. And you will be getting checkpoints to make it a little bit less dense. But there was a shot that brought him to another phase. I'm just, I'm really curious how the developers expected you, on your own, to shoot this guy in the back. Like, he has that kind of hunter AI, where he'll focus on your team a little bit, but then as soon as he tastes your delicious scent, he looks straight back at you. So how would you ever get into a situation where you can exploit his back, outside of using the Guardian, I say Guardian, the uh, the new feature of the, the ground pound thing, that's very similar to the, the hammer attack of the older games. That will stun him, but it doesn't stun him long enough to do any real damage. Like, by the time you've got behind him and shot him once, you have to get away, because if you don't, he's just going to one-shot kill you with his sword. And it literally feels like one dude stuns him, and then your buddies all gangbang him with lasers and stuff. It feels like that's how they wanted it to go down. But, of course, the AI are never going to gangbang anything. They just, they just aren't. And I did experiment a little bit with the final boss, which is essentially this fight, just in a worse room. And I was seeing whether or not I could keep him stun locked. I would do the ground pound, get the stun, hit his core, jump up onto a ledge, jump off again, charge it, and then release it as he recovered. But the second time, it didn't give the same kind of stun and he'd just kill me. So I couldn't get a sequence where I was stunning, attacking, stunning, attacking, and getting him in some kind of you know crazy easy loop. But I'm certain something like that will exist, you just might need more people. And... A great example of that is, if you've ever took summons into Ornstein and Smo on Dark Souls, once you kill Ornstein and you've just got Smo left, everybody can kick him collectively and kind of stunlock him. It's really crazy. I, I've never seen all like it until I watched it on, on one of the YouTube videos. Just th like three phantoms or three people at the same time all kicking, and there's nothing he could do because it kept making him flinch. <laughs> it was wonderful. And every so often, I think he, he managed to power through it with unlimited armor, but they got it into a sequence where he just couldn't do much for about 10 seconds, and it was really fun to see that. Just wish you could achieve it on your own by having a very specific setup. And that's one of the things I like about Dark Souls, the fact that you can do things like that to bosses, but a lot of the times, you just it's not realistic at all to achieve on your own, much like certain boss fights in this game. But the gun I was using then is the Incinerator Cannon, I believe. It has two methods of firing this gun. You can just press the trigger and it will fire uh, the, the smallest distance but the quickest shot. Or you can hold the trigger and it will charge the battery and do a greater distance, a slightly faster projectile and I, I believe more damage. One would hope it does more damage. And judging by the ammunition and display, you've got about four big charges of that gun if you do it right. And four big charges is enough to put enough damage on most things in this game. However, it will not kill the Warden. You will still have to hit him with other things. And right now, the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm getting hit markers, so it's doing damage, and I'm completely safe. And it's just lathering damage on him, it's hopefully boosting forward to the next phase of the fight, hopefully going to give me a checkpoint. Uh, is it entertaining to watch? Hell no. Is it entertaining to do? Hell no. But it's damage, and every little helps. 
on a game such as this, where you know the move he's doing right now, that gold laser that I'm backing away from? That will one hit kill me. If it grazes you, it won't, but it barely grazes you, trust me guys. That thing is a one shot. Everything the Warden does, except for his ground pound, is a one shot. So, just to give you an idea of how terrible this enemy is. And on the final encounter, you're in this amazing catch-22 scenario where you need to stay close to the Warden, but the Warden murders you up close, and you need to stay away from him, but the lasers murder you from being away from them. And the ammunition it takes to kill the lasers is the same amount of ammunition to probably kill the boss. So you either commit to killing lasers and then, you know, work your way around beating him slowly, or you go balls in to try and kill the boss before the lasers and the boss kill you. It, it translates to a very, very arduous and annoying sequence of he's brought in focus turrets. And trust me guys, it might not mean anything to you now, but on Legendary, it is going to. And it's stupid, the turrets take three binary shots. The binary rifle is very rare in this game, and it's meant to be good. Three binary shots, and there are four turrets. Four turrets that can kill you in the space of a second if any of them get a focus fire on you. Because they're focus turrets, because he's brought in focus turrets. But. The light rifle is a great tool to headshot this boss with. Um, it might not look like it's doing any more damage than the suppressor, but it is. This thing has some real kick, and it's a wonderful gun. And, and there's a part of me that wishes that all the Promethean weapons were the same base weapon, but they transformed into different ones. So you know how you see those fancy animations when you pick them up, how they all assemble? Can you imagine if you could swap between the guns? So swap to a scatterburst, or swap to a suppressor, or swap to the pistol thing, or swap to this. And then you know, nobody would use any of those other guns except for this, because this is the good one. And the shotgun up close can sometimes feel kind of good, but for the most it feels underwhelming and, and really nerfed. Like Someone asked me in the comments, are the shotguns good? Because I think since Halo 2 they've, they've really felt underpowered. I don't think I, they've ever felt strong post those early games, I just don't think they do. You have to literally be kissing them with the barrel, and and then if they've got a shield up, they'll probably just one shot kill you with a melee. You know, it's it's that weird thing of I have this base understanding of how a shotgun should work in a game, and it's nothing like a shotgun in real life. Shotguns, because of the way that the spread of the pellet works, they hit things at great distance. They just don't hit things accurately, and they're a hell of a lot more accurate than a game would lead you to believe, because a game has certain conceits that it it portrays when you play. And a shotgun normally is weak over distance, inaccurate over distance, but devastating up close. And that is the way that they've kind of been, and they've, they will probably forever be, but they weren't always that way. Like, look at Doom. The shotgun in Doom is good at all ranges. It's better up close, but it's a gun that is multi-purpose. It is a more powerful variant for the pistol. You know, you start with the pistol, decent at all ranges, but kind of weak, and then you get your shotgun and you realise that it's pretty good at most ranges. Although it's, you know, not great at the most extreme range, but still, it's better than you would believe having come off of these more recent games where there are some shotguns that just don't even hit at anything over like three metres. They just do nothing, so there's no point even firing them. And this is one of them, this gun here. This is a gun that I never recommend shooting at a distance, at any kind of distance. You literally, if you're in mellow range, mellow, if you're in mellow range, just chill down with a nice relaxing piece of progressive jazz. Now, if you're in melee range, then it's perfect. It'll do the most focus fire it can do. Uh, think of it like Dark Bead if you're a, a Souls player. That is a spell that at distance looked like a bag of dicks, but up close, it's a monster. It's absolutely game-breakingly bad in just how much damage it does. And that's what the shotgun mentality is. That is the uh, shotgun symphony that we're, we're currently catechizing. So, my team is up for a, a while here. Check them out, they're doing good things. They're uh, fighting the knight, his face is revealed. So let's try and shove a suppressing needle piece of dog shit gun up it. I love it how he puts like Duracells in this gun to reload it. It's so great. <laughs> Like, that's how you know it's a terrible gun, it runs on fucking batteries. But then again, they all do, don't they? So, it's not really a good point. As silly as it sounds. But, I push up a little bit now, the knight's out of the way. Here's me showing you the, my fantastic shotgun skills. <laughs> the only reason I did that is because he had no armour. If he had armour, I would have died then. But, I do like the mantling on this game, I just wish it was a little bit more zealous. I wish it was the type of thing where, even if you miss by about a metre, he still grabs shit. Because I think it would make it so much more mobile, and... Hobo Jesus said, if I don't like the jump on Halo, I might not like the Black Ops 3 jump. But I get the feeling that the Black Ops 3 jump is not going to be as lofty as this jump. 
I appreciate it might be quite lofty and it's probably quite slow, but compared to the shitty fucking jumping in Halo, I don't think it gets any worse. I really don't. No, it does. Destiny. Destiny's got that shitty jumping. It's like a bungee trademark. I wonder if Oni had shitty jumping. That game that nobody played. But I'm rather happy with that fight just then because the Warden never rushed us. And he can. But we managed to clip him and kill him before he even had a chance to, to pull any of that bullshit, which is always fun to see. And I am rather looking forward to the new Call of Duty, although I'm not excited for it because I haven't been excited for one for a while now. I've kind of burned out on it. But... I do think Treyarch make the better games at this point. I think Infinity Ward made the best games back when it was Infinity Ward before all the bullshit happened. And it does make me wonder, you know if the lawsuit had have never gone through with the uh, the two people, the developers, is it Zampella and, and that other guy? What Call of Duty would have been if there'd have been none of that, you know, friction, none of that disputing and, and bullshit and bad blood? Do you think it would have been a different series at this point? Do you think it would have moved towards maybe what Titanfall's achieving? with the, the vehicle and the the fast and great moving action. I don't know. I like to think that Call of Duty, in a parallel dimension, went on a really, really bold and experimental path of perhaps having one game every three years, but that one game was always shifting and different and great. But we don't live in that place. We live in a place where they're pumping out like three a fucking year. It's ridiculous. They have like four different dev teams working on them and... It just makes me so sad because it's so popular and it has absolutely no reason to be anymore. Like, when was the last good Call of Duty? Black Ops 2? You know, you really get down to it. Like, I enjoyed Ghost's campaign and I enjoyed Ghost's multiplayer for about, you know, like, the two weeks I played it and then I never went back, which is kind of speaking volumes of the, that game. Advanced Warfare... I thought the campaign was fun, it had some good ideas, but I hated the multiplayer. I absolutely despised it. Like, so when you really think about it, when was the last one that you really, really enjoyed playing? And to me, that's Black Ops 2. And even then, like, before Black Ops 2, it was Black Ops 1 that was the one that really made me invest the same way that Call of Duty 4 did. So, in my eyes, it's like COD 4, Black Ops 1. And that's it. Everything after that, there's been fun moments and I've played them quite a lot. Like Modern Warfare 3, I played a ton. But I wouldn't say that they were truly great. And I think Call of Duty is at that point now where I would love to see it die. I would love to see it fail. And I would love it to go back to the drawing board and we not see it for a very long time. And then when we do, it does something, you know, innovative, interesting and, and makes itself current and, and wanted. But it's the multiplayer that... There's like a generation of people that's grown up playing that multiplayer and as long as that's popular, people are going to buy it. Like look at the fucking last gen version of Black Ops 3, no campaign and 30 frames per second. How the hell can Activision release a Call of Duty that's 30 frames per second? COD 2 was 60 and it came out, when did it come out? When the 360 came out? When did the 360 come out? I don't even know, 2005, 2006? So it's been like 10 years or something around that date of 60 frames per second Call of Duty games. And what are we getting now? 30 frames for those poor bastards that haven't upgraded. That is just disgusting. It's the worst. But you know what? There's still some dumb bastards that'll buy it. Because people are stupid. I was on a video the other day. Digital Foundry analysing this game. The price of 60 frames per second. And they were literally being the most pedantic you can fucking be looking at things and picking flaws. And there's nothing wrong with that because it's kind of what that video is meant to do. But... Half of it is the shit you don't even notice when you're playing because you're fighting and stuff shooting at you. But when you stand there and you walk forward and you see the, like the differences in the shadows moving and popping in and the texture quality going between three different variants, yeah, you're going to spot little inconsistencies and what have you. But at the end of the day, it runs at 60 frames per second almost exclusively the entire time you're playing and in multiplayer, which is amazing because it makes the mechanics work the best they've ever worked. And then you've got all these fucking dumb bastards like, oh, I'll have 30 seconds any day and have it not look this ugly. Because that is an uneducated, stupid person who has no idea what frame rate does for them. Like, that is the fucking person who literally wants big tits, a nice ass, blonde hair, like blowjob lips and doesn't care about personality because they're immature and they're idiots. And that's what it is. It's the gaming equivalent of that guy who literally doesn't want a relationship because he's a human waste of space. Oh, by the way, on this sequence, it's not actually all that tricky, but you can die very fast. So just be careful. Like, I just... 
it really frustrates me when when people say stuff like that these sweeping generalizations that have absolutely no idea how it makes you suffer like how anybody can want something to look shinier is beyond me like i understand it for pride reasons if you were to show it off because it probably stems from our you know animal brain when we used to peacock our tits off to try and get a mate so we could you know procreate and get some of that ass but you're not doing that with a game. It's not a pocket watch that you shine to make it look awesome when you flick it out and be like, that's right, I can tell the time, vintage style. Because at the end of the day, as long as the mechanism working, the clock is working. And that's all that fucking matters. You know, it's... It's, it's that weird mentality of people, you know? Do you want holes in your shoes but them to be polished to a, sh to a mirror shine? Or do you not mind them to be scuffed a little bit but to have perfect soles? I know what I want. And uh, I just, I, like I say, I struggle to understand how people can be so fucking dense. They're like planets. There it is. It's unbelievable. The and it's, it's just this weird thing because, you know, if you've shadowed these people that make these stupid statements on the internet, and I make stupid statements all the time so you can shadow me all you want, and you'll see the same kind of thing. But they're the same people that'll complain about something that, like, they missed a kill or something didn't work right, and they'll bitch. And the thing that didn't work right was something getting dropped or something getting missed or not responding because of the frame rate. Oh, like, it's just, I, I find it baffling. I truly do. And I don't mean to talk about frame rate a lot because it generally attracts other people that are like, a console peasant talking about frame rate. You should be playing Minesweeper at 120 frames per second. And to them people, I'm just like, yeah, good luck with that, dude. But that is the end of Mission 7, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the remainder of my Halo 5 walkthrough. You take care now.